All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology. And today, I'm again delighted to have Anuradha ji on this channel. And today, we will be talking on the Nakshatra of Uttara Shada, which denotes victory. So, I hope whoever is watching this becomes victorious in all regards. All right, so welcome. Nice to have you again. Please tell us. Thank you, Baba ji. Thank you, Baba ji, for calling me again. So today we are going to talk about Uttara Shara Nakshatra. This Nakshatra is a very beautiful Nakshatra. I consider it as one of <coughs> sorry, I consider it as one of the most prominent nakshatras after Pushya because this is one very fortifying nakshatra. It is in this nakshatra where it is said that the war between the Asuras and the Devatas came to a culmination with the victory of the Asuras. The Asuras and the Devatas, they are very much present in the spiritual realm, but they are also present within us. As within us, they can denote our bad habits, our good habits, respectively, they can denote a lot of conflict within us. But in this nakshatra, in a very, very practical and prosaic term, if we try to do something, we start a good habit. Okay, so this is trying to overcome something bad in us, and this nakshatra helps us to do that also. So that's right at the beginning. I've given you a tip that just do not let us consider that it is something to do with only the asuras and the devatas. It is something to do with us also. It helps us gain a strong foothold in the positive realm of our life. We will see how and why as we move on. This nakshatra has its foothold in two zodiac signs. It has its foothold in Sagittarius as well as Capricorn. In Sagittarius, it occupies 26 degrees, 40 minutes to 30 degrees. And in Capricorn, it occupies 0 degrees to 10 degrees. The first pada is found in Sagittarius and the next three padas, two, three, four, are found in Capricorn. So there are four stars which make up, which are prominent you know, they are part of the entire constellation. Millions of stars make up one constellation or one nakshatra. But <clears throat> being so far away from these stars, they're millions and millions of miles away from us, kilometers away from us. So there are few stars which will, star, which will shine very brightly. And um, they kind of give us a shape for us to make uh, the shape of the constellation they, these four stars are sigma sagittarius zeta sagittarius phi sagittarius and tau sagittarius and you can see they give a shape of the elephant's tongue to the nakshatra now let us talk about the shakti of this nakshatra why is this nakshatra called a very uh, undefeated victory or a permanent victory because the Shakti or the power that this nakshatra has within itself is known as Apradraksha Shakti or that is Apradraksha Rishya. Um, so what this Shakti, the power here of this nakshatra is that which does not stop. I mean, it is something that has achievements in it once you start something in here you will definitely achieve what you set out to do apradishra that means something that cannot be defeated like the symbol of this nakshatra as the elephant's tongue that needs to be uh, you know when the elephant it's one of the most prominent parts of its body and with that very tusk, though it's a vegetarian, it can tear down very thick trees, barks of the trees, and it can absolutely cut through the, uh, you know, the belly of the most ferocious of animals like tigers and lions, because that is, they're so sharp. So they have an unstoppable victory about them. The foundation above is the strength to win, and the foundation below is the goal that can be won. This nakshatra has the power to take up goals 
which seem as if it's going to have a defeat and we are going to see it in the example next but they will eventually lead us to victory okay so the asuras were very powerful very very powerful however they were very much subjugated put given put in the realm of the patala and then they were very much put into uh, the victory then went on to the devatas the devatas here represent the right within us the asuras represent the wrong doings within us so there are times when our vices when our wrong doings have a upper hand they try to capture our mind however there is a very strong side the truth prevailing goods within us which will have to overcome the wrong to find its way up okay the desire that this nakshatra had was to gain victory that can never be lost something that is shashvat something that is chirasthai uh, that is meaning that will remain forever okay so let us see what happens in the first case that we take up the first case that i take up here is that of abraham lincoln we all know who abraham lincoln was but just to re uh, you know recap for everybody's benefit he was an american lawyer he was a politician and he was a us president one of the most respected figures in the history and most famous leader in the united states he held office from 1861 to 1865 and he also was assassinated the reason that he was assassinated now abraham lincoln uh, was as you know here it if you see his data his lagna is that of aquarius aquarius is said to be a futuristic lagna okay and it's an airy sign promoting a lot of thought and promoting a lot of future events and things like that uh, he had a vision he had a vision of a slave free america something that was not heard of in those days especially in the southern states where where cotton was grown and there was a lot of labor intensive uh, areas you know there was a lot of slavery there and uh slaves were absolutely treated like things they were not treated as human beings very poor conditions of living families torn apart just at the drop of hat and such many such things now what happens is this man comes up with a very compassionate idea that there has to be a stop to things the civil war that was fought after he won the elections as a president of united states was because he wanted to bring about an end to slavery and the southern states definitely did not want that to happen so there was a war within the country itself you know the country was divided into two parts somehow he fought he he took the country across through that very very turbulent phase came out victorious wherein slavery was abolished and the federal government was strengthened today when we say that it was it's it is easy with the communications being so open so wide and we have everything right at the tip of our fingers but in those days it was a different time altogether and i'm not even talking of something that happens in the 90s i'm talking about something that happened in 80s 18s it you know in the um 19th century so he was and now he see the sixth lord moon is sitting in the 12th house sixth lord represents the sixth house represents your ability to do work 12th house represents losses it also represents uh, you know the international fame 12th house also represents letting go sixth lord also represents litigations lot of war and everything else and there is a parivartana the best part is there is a parivartana between the 6th lord and the 12th lord so under a lot of pressure this man was able to achieve what very many people could not do it they didn't even think about it let's take the lagna because the lagna here is a futuristic lagna they did not even have the compassion within them and he did that and he was a very unassuming person 
he did not have you know when people are big in stature and politicians well known figures they have a lot of uh, um, ego they have a lot of fanfare and they try to show it he did, went about doing his work as a normal man and that was the his humility was the mark that made him big and finally as is because of the position because his mind was so strong he was able to get the country across it is a known fact that he was very depressed because also of loss of his children he had four children only one survived him and there's another interesting fact that his wife mary was from a very wealthy family who also dealt in uh, slaves but she supported him through and through so he also had a support but he was a little depressed about but he was assassinated for the very fact that he support he went ahead and did something that was unheard of compassionate wanting to do things for people and you know they say nowadays that no good deed goes unpunished so yes his good deed of trying to get the country into a equality rights and things like that at a very early age where definitely went uh, had his punishment and then that's the way he was and he put the country across so my point here is an unstoppable final victory here because that is what marked him as a person now we've talked about final victory in terms of uh, you know we've talked about final victory in terms of the country in general i would like to talk here again as a personal victory i told you that it is also a lot to do with personal victory too right so let me take you on to another example here of personal victory and that is drew barrymore she was she is an alcohol and a drug abuse survivor right at the age of se- her father was an alcoholic at the age of 7 after her parents separated her mother used to carry her uh, take her to parties and she started drinking by the age of 11 she was an addict to drinks and drugs so can you imagine a small child being so much addicted to um, you know that that's this just not an acceptable or thought about fact at least for us and uh, when she was a very small child say around 7 or 9 i don't remember she was so much she had seen so much around herself and you know so much of disturbed family life that she was filming she was a child artist also she was filming for one of the movies with steven spielberg and she goes up to him and says that would you mind being will you please be my godfather so can you imagine the child having lost so much in terms of her family life seen so much of abuse all around her that she wants certain stability in her life and in all compassion that man agrees and man and you know he had uh, actively sought her out also on a number of occasion to be very you know very straight forward and to get rid of her habits and things like that when we come here we see that this lady at 14 she was put into a rehab uh, at around 12 or 14 i don't remember the exact dates she was put into a rehab and she came out of it she by 14 or 16 she was divorced from her parents such that she was said to be an adult she started living alone then she started taking help of people who were drug abuse survivors and then today she's come to a platform where she has a happy married life she has children she believed she said that you should have children only when you are ready to accept the responsibility because that comes from her own experiences and she's also a you know she's also a producer she's also an actor she's she uses her experience to help others and that according to me is no less a victory from where you have come to what you have become absolutely <laughs> so you see mars which is the karaka of energy and the lord of the 7th house of public platform okay because mars as the 12th lord and the 7th lord of scorpio and the 12th lord of aries it becomes the 12th lord of international fame 12th lord of 
also hospitals and you know these centers that we go alcoholic anonymous or uh, one of these centers where you put 12th house also denotes that because it's a confinement so that and it is placed in the ninth house of integrity honesty legality of marriage luck prosperity everything having gone through everything she comes back as a very very victorious person to me at the very least so that is drew barrymore for us so now let's move on to the vishwadeva devtas who are the deity in of this nakshatra well this nakshatra also has one more very beautiful and a very cute deity and he is ganesha okay but vishwadevtas they also call the universal devtas and according to vishnu puran they were the 10 sons of dharma and vishwa the daughter of universe's genetic engineer daksha okay and this constellation as i said it is also associated with ganesha there are very many uh, you know very many stories and as per the indian puranic stories there are very many variations to who the vishwa devtas are but vishnu puran says that they are the 10 sons of dharma and vishwa one of the daughters of daksha there's another story saying that the vishwa devtas are the 33 devtas important devtas okay and we'll take them we take both the versions before i move uh, we will i just like to add to one thing dharma rakshati rakshat what does that mean it means when i'm talking about dharma dharma rakshati rakshata that means that i'll say it a little uh, slowly dharma rakshati rakshita who upholds the dharma dharma upholds him what does that mean that means if you are on the path of the right initially it might feel that you have been short changed with many things in life but if you stick on to what is right dharma means doing the right thing at the right time it does not mean uh, you know giving arms or things like that if it is necessary at that point to give arms give arms if it is necessary at that point not to give arms taking into consideration the situation your dharma would be not to give arms that is serve somebody dharma is doing the right thing at the right time keeping in view the situation and not your personal perception or personal choice so if you are in an examination hall you are sitting and you do not know anything or you don't you know only few things at that moment your dharma as a student is to know what you write to write what you know and not to go shopping to your friends for the answers if you stick on to what is right probably this very exam will have in the near future have a bad experience for you you may not get good marks good marks but on the long run it will teach you the ability to hard of doing hard work knowing everything about your subject beforehand at the same time you might feel that there is a friend of yours who is who has not learned anything at all but has got a good lot of good marks why because he had managed to copy it from the right people on the long run you will see he will get into habit of cheating not learning his text and he might prove detrimental for his for him on a very very long run so if you are following the part of the truth you you will also always be protected okay so dharma means doing the right thing at the right time so when we take up the right uh, the children of um, you know dharma and vishwa so we will see the children happen to be vasu vasu means goodness dharma is always associated with goodness you have to have this ability to be doing it with a goodness of the heart okay and you have to be truthful so these 10 children as they are said are also very stellar qualities that fortifies a human being and also the devatas 
satya is the truth now there's one thing when i associate with vasu and satya and they say there's a saying in sanskrit satyam bruyat priyam bruyat na bruyat satyam apriyam that means you should always speak the truth but but speak that truth which does not hurt the person sometimes we are very callous when talking and say no but i was telling the truth but you are hurting a person to no extent that is your ego speaking there is no goodness in your speech and it is not going to affect anybody in the right manner yeah this shloka is there in the gita also no anudvegam karam vakyam satyam priyam hitam chayat ha so you ke- you have to krishna this bhagavad gita is one of the one of my favorite uh, is the favorite book because you know whenever you are upset whenever you are in fact this this vishvadevta uh, feature if you see that's the vishwa roop that krishna takes in the 10th uh, adhyay when he actually puts in a very big uh, he shows the virat roop to arjuna and says see you can see everybody within me so he says that you have to be honest but you all of us can be humble in our honesty katru will par see uh, today i set up a um, supposing i set up a routine that he has from today at 6 o'clock i will definitely get up in the morning and i'll go for my morning walk that's a good that's one of the defining things in life because it helps me to maintain a good physique which is very important after a certain age but i need the will part the ability to push myself out of the bed at 6 o'clock in the morning is something very uh, most of us okay we'll do it from tomorrow it's we slept in late we will always find an excuse of not getting up it's a will power that will push us out that's another one daksha is ritual skill so when we are doing something we must have the skill we must know the procedure for it that's daksh that's dexterity also finds its root in the word sanskrit word daksh okay kala means time so everything in time everything in place that's one of the universal truths kama is desire and last it does not have to be just when we talk about calm or desire or lust we only think on a unidirectional method or way of gender bias or gender sexuality or things like that no to do anything you have to have a desire even when this universe was created god had the desire to create a an universe and that is how the universe was created so this is important to have a desire to do anything is important dhriti dhriti means firmness so uh, again truthfulness is firm today i know that if i have cheated and my mother tells me well, why have what happened tell me very truthfully and i can either be firm and say that yes i cheated and that would require a lot of courage within me so these are these are the 10 gods they're said to be the 10 universal gods but if you take it within the human being because they say that narayan or the soul resides in everybody so he it must have all these qualities too so these qualities will find a resonance within us also kuru is the ancestors all of us have an ancestor and i always believe honestly that all of us should whether you know about your ancestors or not okay from whichever caste creed country that you are in whether you know about your ancestors or not they know you so every morning you need to pay your abulence to them you need to thank them for your being on this planet it is because of those ancestors that you are on this planet had the lineage died somewhere you would not be where you are today and once you start thanking them you give them that energy when you give them that energy see if see because bhavaji you speak a lot on gita in the third uh, adhyay or the third section also krishna says that you need to give 
energy to the devatas and they will reciprocate back to you in from in form in some form to help generally what do we do we tell the gods that uh, you know please do this for me then i will give so much in tirupati wow. or i will do some so much there i will do so much here okay but we always do it the wrong way see you want to get something done okay as per what i understood from the gita i am just telling you my version everybody is open to it you want to get something done first you need to go there and say that please help me this is what i have to offer to you don't bribe offer it with love and affection and say this is all that i have to offer to you please help me in my task you may get something that you had not even thought of your aim is to get 5 crores of rupees okay his aim might be to give you 10 crores but you put a stop to that right at 5 crore when you say that if i get 5 crore i will give you 10% of it he may not want that 10% also he may just do good with two uh, you know two um, handful of uh, rice as was the case with sudama his very good friend so what i'm trying to tell you here is that you need to just go and say please please help me in this task of mine i do not know how to go about it please show me the direction i'll be grateful this is my offering to you that acts as an energy for him her whoever you want to believe in and that is reciprocated and that is across all religions it's not just hinduism i'm talking about it is across all religions okay and then you have purur purur vasas that is you know the abandons any any of his grace is always associated with a lot of abundance and when you get his grace you're always on the peak of joy when you have, you have work with the goodness of heart towards your target being truthful having that will uh, and gaining that ability to do the skill at the right time okay with a lot of firmness remembering your ancestors in grace you are always in joy so this lists out the 10 universal gods of the vishnu devtas as per vishnu puran and it is very important to remember this these vishnu devtas very very much now let me tell you why these vishnu devtas have a very strong connotation when you are doing your pujas early in the morning you have to do the swasti it's the ablation you're calling them to help you out so in the swasti also they have a mention and they also have a mention in the shanti where shanti means that you are saying thank you may there be peace shanti means peace so when you're saying your thank yous om dyam shanti antariksha shanti prithvi hi shanti उंड the second form of vishwadevtas that is found in the you know in the stories the 13th vishwadevtas the ashtavastus who are a form of uh, the these ashtavastus are the form of uh, you know the dev the vasus that are directional gods and they rule the dhanishta nakshatra when we do the dhanishta nakshatra we'll take them up in detail the 11 rudras are again it has throughout the puranic stories there are a lot of variations but shiva is said to be in one of the texts said with the you know the uh, chief among them there's also about rudra who is the lord of the adra nakshatra being a very strong in them they also said to be maruts maruts means either they are said to be the lord of Uh, you know children of adra uh, rudra 
or they are also said to be the children of Kashyap, Rishi Kashyap and Diti. Diti is the mother of the Rakshasas. Yes. So, uh, and where Indra and these Rudras are associated with Indra's highly powerful beings who help in Indra in his fights. There's a big story behind it, the huge story and how they become, they were supposed to be the ones to kill Indra, but by grace of, uh, you know, God, they ended up being his compatriots and ended up helping him. But it's a huge story. And we are already, we've, you know, explained so much of stories. So do you want me to do the story up? Uh, yes, you can say, I mean, if you want. Okay. So, uh, on seeing Indra being so powerful, Rishi, Kasha Prishi was married to a number of daughters of Daksha. Among them was Aditi, Diti, Kadru and so many more. Aditi was the mother of the Devatas and she is the goddess of the Punarvasu Nakshatra. Okay, and she is an encompassing. So she gave birth to a very stellar qualities, Devatas, the Adityas being another, uh, you know, the daughter, the sons of Aditi. So the Rudras that we see here, now uh, Diti, who is the mother of the Rakshasas. So the Rakshasas, Asuras, that is, have the same parentage, same father as that of the Devadas. So the good and the bad come from the same person, are within the same person. So Sage Kashyap is said to be the father of the Rakshasas, Asuras, that is, and also of the Devadas. Now, Diti wants one day when Sage Kashyap has come back after a strong penance and seeing that her sons, the Rakshashas, are being overpowered by the Devatas, Hina Kashyap, Hina Kashyapu, all those are overpowered. What Diti does is she goes up to him and says that, No, I want a son who's capable enough to kill Indra. Now, Indra is also a son of uh, Kashyap, Rishi Kashyap. How can he get his own son killed? But it's his wife wants a child and he ha it is the duty of a husband to fulfill his wife's every need. One of them being childbearing. So he is forced to do that. But he says that you are only able to do that. And what I have said just now is from the Vedas and from the Shastras. I am not putting in any word of mine. People may think that because I am a feminist, I might be saying that. I am just quoting from the Shastras. So uh, what he he says that see you will get a child, but if you want a fruit of a stellar quality, you need to put in that stellar amount. I mean, whatever you put is something what you get. So if you are putting in a lot of effort, you will get something which is very beautiful. So he gives us a gives her a few not few a whole list of dictates that she has to follow to get that child. And uh, she agrees because she is not determined to help her children. A mother will go to any extent to help her children. So, but Indra gets the whisper of it and he comes and he, when once she's sleeping at the wrong time, she move, he moves into the womb. So a mother who is expecting should not sleep at the wrong time also. The prescribed times also of sleeping. Anyways, coming back. So what she, he does, is he starts chopping that. But there's somebody, Narada, from outside instructs that you are doing something very wrong. You cannot, you cannot harm an unborn child. That will give you a, one of the biggest sins possible. That is so adharmic. So he says, Sir, what do I do? He said, you come out of the womb now and these, we have to work it out in such a manner that these children within the womb of Diti become the concert of yours. I mean, they start helping, they become your aids. And then there is a clause in the dictates that Lord Kashyap, Rishi Kashyap gives Diti stating that if there is any of the clause that you do wrong, then instead of killing Indra, this child will become an aid to Indra. And so, Diti makes one mistake. She gets angry. You're not supposed to get angry. She gets angry at a wrong time. As a result, as a result 
these children become very strong supporter of indra extremely powerful warriors extremely powerful warriors okay and now with the 12 adityas uh, 12 adityas are the 12 solar gods they are children of uh, uh, you know that's why uh, they are the children of um, markande and aditi or some say they are children of Aditi and Daksh. So there is a lot of confusion in there. But basically the mother form is Aditi, who is said to be the mother of everything. She that is why Punarvasu people are have the ability to generate a lot of energy from nowhere. Okay, and they are 12 sons, S U N, not S U N S, they are also S U N S and SONS of Aditi and they rule the 12 solar months. Each has its own uh, enturage, they have their own Rishi, they have their own Naga, they have their own Sarpa, they have their own Rakshas, they have their own damsels or the Apsaras and the entire enturage defines the how the solar month is going to be. And then we have Brahma Prajapati who rules over Rohini as we know and Brihaspati who rules over Pushya. So they are the 33 gods. They say in Hinduism they have 33 uh, crores, you know, of gods. But essentially they are the 33 gods. 